First off, here's the reeds. Now you might see two more reeds appear. Well, I don't have a country bassoon or an English horn, but I do have a reed for both of them. So that's why they're here. So if you can look over here, for a better shot. So yeah, so the one of they left is an oboe reed. And you can tell because the cork um, at the bottom. And then one next to it is an English horn reed. And then we have a bassoon reed and then a contra bassoon reed. So now I'm going to show you how the oboes and bassoons send each other first with the reeds. So first, here's the oboe reeds. Now, the one on the left is for the normal oboe, and they have a cork. And the English one is the one on the right, and it doesn't have a cork. Because instead of going into the body instrument like the normal one does, it goes through the bulk of the English horn. And you can see that the English reed is not that much bigger than the oboe one, but it's, a lot, it's enough that you can see a difference right here. That's just like work. Let me try this. Um. So yes, the one left is for English horn, right and right for oboe, the normal one. You can see the, you can see the English horn reads a lot bigger, at least a little bit bigger though. And another thing that makes them oboe reads because of this, they both have the same shape. See how both of them, you can tell it's the same shape pretty much. And yeah, because on top, you have it being flat and then the bottom is a little smaller and it goes from being flat to being a circle, you know, base style. As in, it goes from being a flat plane to a cylinder facing pillow to the one or two axis of the rectangle plane. And now you can see bassoon ones. And like the was the bassoons have different sets as well. So the one on the left is for a normal bassoon, the one on the right is for a contra bassoon. You can see how much bigger it is, and for some reason, um, some country series have these corners cut off. I don't know why they do that, but yeah, you can see how much bigger they are. And now I'm gonna show you how much bigger they are side by side. So yeah, the one on the left is for a normal bassoon, and the one on the right for a country bassoon. You can see how much wider is the other one. So yeah, and now you can all see the same shape. So yeah, kind of like the two oboes, these two bassoons are also the same shape as each other. Because unlike oboes, where they're flat at top and then they get a little smaller and go to cylinder, the bassoons are the same thing. But one difference is that on a bassoon, the bottom is a lot smaller than the top with the width. And now I'm going to show you how different the oboes bassoons are. As you can see, unlike the two oboes and two bassoons, where the reeds are the same shape, with the bassoon reed and oboe reed, you see the reed is not the same shape. See. The old one is more of a rectangle and the bassoon is more of a trapezoid or a triangle if you want to go that far. And the old is longer too. So yeah, they don't quite match up. And just like the other two, with English horn and kind of bassoon, the reeds are also different shape as well. See? Different shape. English horn is more rectangle, kind of bassoon is more triangle. And the English horn is longer too. So it kind of shows you that the dull reeds are not really interchangeable because of how bassoon reeds are shaped different than oboe reeds. And also, there's something called a bass oboe and an octave bassoon. They are the same pitch, yet if you try to use the same reed to play both, you probably fail because they won't go into both of them, only one, the one I'm meant for. So now you see the four reeds in their cases, except for the no oboe. I tried to put it in this case, but Unlike the other two on the right, like a stamp without it falling down, the other one can't do that because it's skinny, so I put it in the English horn case lid thing right there. The case for the oboe is right there, the cylinder one. So, yes. Now, better if the English horn was a bass oboe just so that you go from normal oboe and then you go one octave low for each member until you get to contra bassoon. And yes, two on the right oboes, two left, sorry, two on the left oboes to invite bassoons and now that's it for the reeds so now we have the bassoon and oboe put together completely except for the reed so with bassoons they are four times the length of an oboe yet the bell is only a little bigger than the oboe's bell but before I show you more in depth I've also modeled them too except that they are keyless just like the sing reeds one I did earlier so here's the oboe and bassoon I modeled So yes, you can see that the bassoon is a lot longer than the oboe, just like for real. And unlike my bassoon, which is black, this one's brown because that's the normal color for bassoons. Why is two ones are black? I don't know, they just are. 
but to sort of build more precisely, I had to flip the bassoon upside down so that it is now in line with the old bell. So I looked at the bassoon one on the right, and you can see that even though it has a bulge in the outside, the inside is just a linear taper, as in it's a frozen. So, yeah, that's something you probably didn't know. And on the oboe, the one left, the bell is, well, pretty much what you expect, except that it's thicker than with the bassoon in some areas. Now, it's really different at the end of the bell when you have that, you know, bulge thing on the two sides, but otherwise, it's kind of the same shape as the inside. So even though both oboes and bassoons are conical and the double reeds and they have all marks used because of it, the boards are also different as well, not just the reeds. So on a bassoon, so you have this tapering that goes on. And yeah, you see from the bell, it starts getting drastically smaller, and then it goes to the boot joint. Yeah, that's what the two inside boot joint looks like. I've me measured it, and that's what it came out. And yeah, that part is actually a cylinder, just not straight. And then you go tapering, and look and, and you can see that that's the one over here is actually a lot bigger than over here. And if I go to the top like this, so yeah, you have even more of a tapering. But unlike bassoon, always do have pretty much an even taper. So here's a bell, and then well besides that, that's kind of how clarinets work. Then from there. See, steady taper pretty much. Oh, and technically, the normal do you have a bulk or it's just it's part of the reed instead of being part of the crook instead, or in this case, separate. So, not about bell sizes. So, um, unlike the saxophones, which do not have a D type of bell, and like clans that do have a D type of, uh, that has a D type of bells, these two have it as well. And before that, this is actually smaller than this, and I'll show you now. So now I took the bells off of both the bassoon and the oboe, and now here's the two bells next to each other like this. So yeah, you can see how much bigger the bassoon is to the old one, but that's the outside. Inside is, well, not that different. That's only a little smaller than that. And remember what I said about the board being different of the bell of the bassoon? Well, here's the thing. See? Look closely. That's actually a straight taper. Unlike this, that is not. But oh bell, that flare, well, you can kind of see that here. Other than, well, there's that thing in the bottom where it's just like a flat thing because that's how you get the bell on, like so. Oh yes, and here's the two holes I mentioned earlier, that in order to get a good tone, you'd put on tape, at least that's what I do. So yes, so the concept of different reed shapes and board types, is what sets you apart, at least in the physical properties. So now I put the bells back on, but instead of before, I put on the reed as well because. So that I'll show you how it works. So I have a cap on because you know, they're always pretty delicate, delicate. If they even get a little chip, then they're no longer good, so you have to get a new one. So here's the bassoon one. So yeah, that's bassoon on it. Now if you look over here. So yes. The bassoon reed goes on the outside of the cork. Sorry, outside of the bulk hole. And here's this. On an oboe, well, it's like this. So just like the bassoon, I put the cap on. And um, so you saw how the bassoon is kind of like a saxophone where you put it on the outside. Well, on an oboe, you put it on the inside of the body instead. Or a bulk hole if you have English one or bigger. So yeah, you see that cork right there. So if you think the oboe's bassoons are defined by how high or low pitch they are, then you're very wrong because, like I said, the bore is different enough and so is the reed that they are different because of the sound, at least to my knowledge. For the next section, here's what it looks like if you try to switch the two reeds around. So here's oboe on bassoon. Yeah, you see, it doesn't really go at all because it's not meant for it. And then the other one, bassoon reed on oboe. Oops, if I can get it on here. Yeah, also does not fit. So that's it for this section right here.